So we bring in delegate. Mike Hornby, who around here, we just call him the boss. Yeah, right. That's why you always get Bruce Springsteen as your <laughs> Only on the air does he call me the boss. <laughs> Good morning, Rob. You are the boss. <laughs> Technically. I called you Mr. Hornby a few times early on in your tenure. That's my dad. And you said to me, stop calling me that. That's not the relationship yeah. we have. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll yeah. never do it again. <laughs> King Hornby. Yes, yeah. King Hornby. He crowned me the mogul. That's stuck. In, it's a great I, name. I hate it. Oh, man. You... <laughs> Magazine, TV, radio, yeah, you're, delegate. It still doesn't mean. President of Rotary, governor of Rotary. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore, Not but anymore. you did that. But I rejoined. Are you back in Yeah, back in. Slowly, slowly. Have you gone to a lunch yet? I went to a lunch, yes. Lots of new faces. They're doing a good job down there. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, i got to give you uh, a little bit of credit for something here because it was a segment with you last week in which Nate Harmon called in. We started talking about school security. As Nate said, he kicked a hornet's nest, but it looks like, especially because of Eddie Gokenauer and his uh, involvement in this, that we finally maybe get a little action. Well, I, I think, uh, and I think, you know, Nate made a good point. He 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 called in. We were talking. Hardy and I have been been trying to do this resource officer thing for the, the last year. Um, Nate called in, expressed his concerns, and. Whether he went through the right channels or not, that doesn't seem, it seems to, he, he's bypassed the channels and everybody's talking about it. We might get something done. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I had a very productive meeting with the superintendent on Friday um, regarding resource offices as well as uh, some other issues. Um, I've always enjoyed talking to him and he's always been open. Uh, during session, I was able to call him and, and, and get his input. I am the only Berkeley County um, legislator on education, so... I felt I had a responsibility to keep the Berkeley County Superintendent and them involved. So um, I give props to him, and we had a great meeting, and I'll be meeting with Steve Catlett uh, on Friday, too. On the Berkeley County yeah. Council. So what did you talk to Ron Stevens about? We talked about resource officers. Um, obviously, well, Specifically, though. Sp well, we you, not, you all agree that you want some. Yeah, I mean, obviously. You know, asking for th the school board to pay for 32 school resource offices is not a realistic uh, fix, right? We can't just pull money out of anything. They well, do. You can ask. We can ask. I assume right. there'd be a couple but, million bucks, but, though. Yeah, but what, what, you know, in my conversations with Nate um, over the last year, um, if we can get to 8, 16, you know, something like that's better than what we have, right? So let's use the number 16 new resource offices. 16, oh, one 16, six. One okay. six. Um, and, and they're roaming or how, and that's including with the city. Uh, that's about $1.2 million, right? Mm -hmm. It works out to be about $57 a child. So, you know, I'm trying to devise a, a plan that, that involves the state, the county, and the school uh, aid formula. So if everybody has some skin in the game, um, I think it would make it um, a lot more feasible. Um, so, so that school aid formula needs to be looked at anyway. And I think uh, Superintendent brought up a great point where, you know, they're using a lot more of their service personnel um, way over than they are on their teacher side. So there needs to be an adjustment to that that school aid formula for the service personnel. And, I, and I'm not talking about just, you know, custodians, bus drivers, things like that. There's much more to it than that. Um, so I think that's something we need to start looking into on a very serious level. That that school aid formula has not been changed in a long time, and times are different. Um, we used to have one teacher in the classroom. Um, you know, special needs classes have way more than one, um, and our special needs kids have grown. That population has grown dramatically, dramatically over the last 20, 30 years. It seems like a cheaper solution or a more immediate solution if we can designate train and arm teachers for a pay, pay bump or, or administrators or whatever to become de facto SROs. So we did pass, in education, we passed the teacher carry um, bill. It didn't get um, out of judiciary. I, I, think it, I think it will in the next session. Um, and there was a lot of good argument, and we did also pass the Guardian um, program. I think we're really going to work on that Guardian program because if you could look at a retired officer or position that would like to come in we don't have to pay them the full amount and they could also be maybe volunteers even though they've gone through all the training that a 
real police officers gone through. And I think the, the big distinction is a school resource officer is a lot different to a regular police officer. The, the, the position is a lot different. Um, it's a lot more interactive with kids. You're building respect. You're, you're trying to eye those issues out before they become an issue. Um, so there's lots of ideas out there, and I think um, we're exploring all of them. And I, I really respect Berkeley County that we're looking ahead. Um, if we can get something done on a state level, great, but let's move ahead in Berkeley County and try and get this done. And how about the, the, in terms of hardening the school, the physical facilities? Super expensive, yeah. right? Um, but it's something that, that needs to be looked at. Um, I'm no professional police officer or anything, but I can go to my kid's school and I can see it's a beautiful school, but there's a lot of glass, right? What are we going to do? We're going to put all bulletproof glass on 700 feet of school or something like that. I think that's something they are working on. I know our school levy. Um, is just starting to kick in. They can do the bonds, but that's going to be happening over the next few years. I don't think that's a one time we're going to fix it this month. Um, so I think you have to, I think you have to give the the school board a little bit of uh, patience when it comes to hardening, to truly harden every entry. Well, and also when you get to windows and such, as a former firefighter, I will yeah. tell you those windows are important when it comes time to get out of a building or sometimes to get into a building. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I, again, I don't pretend to be a professional at any of this. I yeah. just know that th there are people working on it. But in the meantime, we can do something with school resource officers mm -hmm. and with this guardian program, which I think would, would go over very well in West Virginia. Matt Harvey. I, I was just thinking about, you know, there, there's going to have to be an all in approach because or all alternatives on the table because it's it's really becoming challenging to get certified officers yeah. in, a, in a full department now. And if you have to, you know, yeah, I mean, if, that to an SRO, let, yeah. you're taking them off the street. Yeah. If we if we if we suddenly found a pile of money and we said, Hey, Nate, here's 18 school resource officer positions. I don't know if he'd be able to fill them right this second. Right. It's going to have to be a gradual approach as we grow. Um, I. There are, um, and Nate has been talking. Maybe that, retired officer. Re I think something. that's the direction yeah. that that you would want to lean, where um, retired officer, retired uh, veterans, you know, something like that, where it, it's not so much of a full time role, because they are they don't only have to be there during school, right, when the kids are, are there. Um, and maybe on a rotating basis between the schools to. Yeah, I think um, there's lots of ideas out there, Matt, and I think we're just coming up with. Um, the idea, and I love the fact that Nate and, and Eddie, and I think Eddie's great to lead this because he's got that emergency background um, too. So having him on board um, and having the superintendent on board for them to talk about these emergency management p things, practice things like that, I think is it. that's a great meeting to have heard it happen within a week of something happening here last, from what last week. Yeah, and Eddie uh, put together some top people from departments who have skin in the game on this one too. It, 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 every, it seemed to me like every yeah. category was included in this meeting. And, and he to came, make sure from, something he came from that place, so he knows all the, yeah. the people that are, are, are important to, to bring to the table, so I, I thought that was fantastic on his part. Uh, I've got to give him credit too. He also got us into the uh, regional jails when we did our visit there. That was eye-opening, um, and I didn't realize how much of a crisis or sure. emergency that was so yeah and you have you have issues uh and i think john or matt made the point you could or maybe it was you you, you could get eight, 16 18 resource officers money approved but can you hire 16 18 resource officers yeah, or, or gonna, officers period who can be trained to be resource yeah officers? you're gonna hire 18 at a time I, I think uh you need to grow this it's hard uh, to find help yeah i think you need to grow this um organically if you will, don't you? It's the same as the the ERJ and the prisons around the state. If you suddenly had enough money to give everybody a raise, uh, maybe everybody who works in the jail makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Would you have enough applicants for oh. that position to fill? I mean, they have they have a position that they're, they're basically their COO position has been open. Their business manager um, has been open for two years. It's been over. It's a decent paying. I mean, it doesn't pay a lot, but it's a decent paying job. But it's been open for two years. We need to look at that and go, well, maybe we don't need that. We need something else. We need to give the, the corrections officers more, more money. Um, and they just don't have the ability to move out, move the money around within their position. I was getting filling up the tank the other day at a service station, put it in the old ways, and I saw this ad for different positions that were available at this place, including one that paid 80000 plus as a as a manager. 
Did you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can't take the pay cut. I can't tell you, as Matt already said, that, that'd be a pay cut for me. Yeah. Uh, Maybe for Matt, but not for Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was talking about, Rob. <laughs> but that's what you're up against. Yeah. Right? So are you? is it... Is it uh, competitive with that job right there. I hey, mean, that's a tough job to get. And you have to in. ask us, it's the same thing with teachers. Do you want to have to deal with parents, um, kids? I, I know I couldn't be a teacher. Uh, corrections officer, do you want to have to deal with inmates where you could likely lose your livelihood or life? Or life. Um, or do I go and work for Rock's Convenience Store for twenty two fifty an hour? At, at a minimum. At a minimum. Entry-level position. I mean, and, and then you have to look at the way society is. Um, you can make a lot of money sitting at home on your computer. There's not. I'm writing books. I'm not just sitting at home yeah. playing <laughs> on my computer. You, yes, I'm just, <laughs> just saying there are, there are alternative ways that people are found to make money. Mm -hmm. I mean, for goodness sakes, people are making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month posting pictures of their feet. Um, <laughs> that still blows me away. I, I, I'm just, it's is out there. Is that a real thing? That is yeah, a real yeah. thing. People are making, you know, TikTok is making millionaires all over uh, the world from posting random videos of 18 seconds. If you get enough, get enough follows, um, it, it's changed, right? So oh, yeah. do you want to go and work for eight hours a day or do you want to sit at home and post pictures of your feet? A, no, it's, a, it's a reality. I, I would it's a truth, man. I don't want to post. <laughs> yeah, I don't want, nobody wants to see my feet anyway. Harvey, you're not going to make a million dollars a year posting pictures. No, of no, I'll, I'll probably have to give it out. Yeah, you're going to be the one subscribing, buddy. <laughs> Once you're a judge, maybe. But, hey. you know, in those positions, it, it's not... <laughs> judge feet. Uh, judge feet. <laughs> judge Harvey. <laughs> Prosecutor feet. <laughs> it, it, corrections officers and, the, and police officers, firefighters, obviously they want to be paid. Mm -hmm. Um but it's more than that. I mean, my 15 years as a volunteer firefighter, and you get very passionate about it because, you know, it's service community and what have you. So there are people who are cut out for those jobs, and it would be nice to compensate them. But I don't think you would ever, the fact that you can get, you know, $80,000 here yeah. versus a decent sixty-five or 70000 as <clears throat> as a cop, right? There's, that's not real parity. But I think at the same time, our volunteerism has gone down over the last couple of decades i mean we, we, that's probably true. and we've seen in west virginia uh listen we are blessed up here but you know in some parts of the state they have only volunteer fire departments yeah. and they are losing um departments by the dozens each year which i think berkeley county is the only one that has professional or, uh, or paid i think jefferson berkeley um and i maybe uh, uh charleston you know things like that. Jefferson does not. They yeah. they, have, they have they have their EMS that are dual trained. Gotcha. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things where we have different problems. Like the EMS bill that died on the last day of session. It was so important to so many people down there. Where for us, we were going. Well, you know, it's six hundred thousand dollars coming, but you know, it doesn't really. Um, it wasn't as important as so many other bills that we were, we were on. So. Well, look, do you think that um, with the Eastern Regional Jail having a 70% vacancy rate in their staff, do you think that could be the Trojan horse to get locality pay? Uh, I wish. Um, I, I think there is a pathway to get what we need, but I think it needs to come permissible through the county. Um, I, I, there is a path. It's just a matter of getting all those people together um the the issue is the regional jails are throughout and they're all the same they're all 70 percent compared like i, I heard it was i was read it was like 40 percent in the other well, places 40 the, to 50 the, from what i'm hearing it's just as bad we just happen to have a very busy jail i mean we have a busy jail the prison down at uh, uh moundsville i think is where they're having just as much issues um it, it's it, it's a systemic problem that we've haven't found the answer that's for. a powder keg it's not a, it's, a problem it's a powder keg yeah the scary I, explode. I was sitting up in the pod um overlooking the cells and there was two uh guardsmen in there and they've got eight pods to watch and it was crazy i couldn't believe out of control inmates no the, the inmates were doing inmate stuff right we were there we were overlooking uh, i think uh 
better inmates, not the, the ones that aren't um, violent offenders, and it was like three pods of women and then um, misdemeanors or something like that. Um, but they're still inmates and they're still trying to get away with whatever they can. Like the amount of, they would explain in the, in the yard is in the middle of the, the jail. It's got a graded roof on it so they can get out and get, get outside. But people like slingshotting drugs, like hundreds of yards into this yard and they have to check the roof. They, they don't have people to do maintenance. It's, it's an issue. It's an issue that, that we need to find a solution to now. And I, it, I just, it, with, I hopefully we, we, we attack that sooner rather than later. So, Matt, there's a question for you. Is there room for reform? What percentage of, well, you're not gonna, it's not a hard percentage, but are there a good number of prisoners, inmates, incarcerated who really could have ankle monitors and be at home and not have to be in the in, in the jail nonviolent ones of yeah. course well I, I can speak to jefferson county and i've m- mentioned it like that is something that 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 i personally do on a weekly basis is review the jail list with that we get weekly and um there's not a lot of wiggle room it's it's really violent criminals or it's somebody that's that's violated uh probation or per, on a parole hold or they've failed to show up for a court like it's just bigger a bigger issue than than a little bit of reform because we yeah. they, they the legislature's done a good job with with modifying bail laws to to allow more people to that on the lower level misdemeanors nonviolent. yeah i mean the berkeley county day report out. center yeah we're, we're doing all the, the right things but you know I, maybe maybe i'm not allowed to say this but maybe privacy privatization is the way to go at this point it just seems like we don't have the answers at the state level uh, you know what are, what are we doing we may, we may need to bring some experts in here and that's just uh, you know I, I can't think of um, unless you're going to say hey listen we're going to give every guard seventy five thousand. well you know i'm not sure that that would i don't think, i don't think it would i don't think throwing the money at it is going to make people go yeah, this I, I, is I mean it crib. will help yeah. obviously it will improve things but i i don't know if that Money is just the only answer here. Again, we go back to the beginning, which is you're competing against other ways to make a amount of money that's close to that that doesn't end up anywhere near the danger. And, that that and I think uh, one of the things that was, that was brought up was we're training officers, uh, corrections officers, but as soon as they're trained, they can move to Virginia or Maryland, right? right? <laughs> so we're doing all the training for them, then they go. But we don't have a reciprocating where if you trained in Virginia, you can't just come here. you got to go through training again. So maybe and, and the need, money's not going to be as good. Well, mate, but at the same time, maybe our way of life is better, and that's what if we could reciprocate and say, "Listen, if you're trained in Virginia, yeah, come why, on, why come on we over." Well, maybe that's got something the, that the law. That's something that we can attack this okay. session. Is say, "Listen, we can change that where a corrections officer who is trained in Virginia, Maryland, or any of the surrounding uh, counties uh, or states, should I say, um, can come to us, and that might." help with the issue and that was brought up in, in our in our visit with the uh with the erj so did you talk to the guardsmen who are standing in we talked to guardsmen we talked what's to what's their attitude like you know the guardsmen are, are very upbeat it wasn't i i don't think it was an issue for them so much that it wasn't what they signed up for but they are not down on the floor right so they are always in a position where they beh- they are either behind a computer or behind a uh locked door locked thing that they're, they're not walking prisoners or thing that's all the corrections officers um and that's another issue the corrections officers they don't get to do any other jobs now they only get to be on the floor so that's very taxing mm-hmm. so now you know they don't get to go up in the in, in the tower uh, but we talked to the the warden the um assistant warden we talked to some some guards uh that's it, a legal issue though that the guard can that, be in contact and, with the and inmates. we get it because they are, they aren't trained as corrections officers so it's one of those things where we're utilizing the guard in the way we can. Um, they don't seem to hate it. Um, you know, the people I talked to weren't like, hey, this this is terrible. They, they feel like they're performing um, the duty that they signed up for. They're helping the state. 